Tesla shares down as competition starts to heat up. Our Phil LeBeau joins us now with more on that. Hey, Phil. With potential investments in electric vehicle maker Rivian getting attention, it raises the question, is Tesla's dominance of the U.S. EV market potentially being threatened? Well, not anytime soon. Last year, Tesla easily outdistanced its competitors when it comes to EV sales in the United States. But keep in mind, those sales were helped out by deliveries of the Model 3. Over the next couple of years, there will be more competition. New electric vehicles on the way, especially from luxury automakers like Porsche and Jaguar. That could cut into Tesla's lead. And then in the mass market, don't be surprised if you see Tesla seeing greater competition, especially when it comes to crossover utility vehicles and pickup trucks. Two areas where Tesla has plans, but those vehicles are not yet close to being sold. As a result, Tesla's dominance, well, it looks like it has nothing to worry about right now. It could be threatened in the next couple of years. Melissa, back to you. All right, Phil, thanks, Phil LeBeau. For more on the next frontier for electric vehicles, let's bring in Adam Jonas, Morgan Stanley's global auto analyst. Adam, great to have you with us. Thanks for having us. Um, I want to get right to this Rivian mm -hmm. report. I, I thought that was interesting from the GM perspective as well as from the Tesla perspective, but just the notion that GM, you know, when it comes to this very profitable segment for them, the pickup truck, they want to make sure they have a toehold in the electrified pickup truck. Is that really a threat for Tesla? Who, which does not have a product currently on the market? So Tesla has monopolized uh, publicly traded electric vehicles since the IPO, and they've pretty much all but monopolized the market, right? Uh, Tesla accounts for about 80% of unit volume of EVs in the States, 90% of revenue, and they've done that without being in the hottest segments like pickup trucks and really a broader utility platform. So if someone can kind of cut them off at the pass and say, hey, we're going to put uh, an electric powertrain uh, and a duty cycle with fleet buyers that can power tools and work with infrastructure on a job site, uh, perhaps that's something that could be a differentiated edge that Tesla acknowledges. They'll unveil an electric pickup truck this summer, but you know, maybe, maybe that's a way for someone to get in and try to cut Tesla off from um, that dominance. Who, who, who do you think will win this fight? I mean, obviously GM has the production expertise that mm -hmm. Tesla may not have, and it's, they've had difficulties launching a new products onto the markets. Um, but Tesla does have that cool factor, we, the design factor. We think uh, it's going to be a clean sheet approach where you start from total ground zero on electric vehicle architecture, uh, software done in-house, uh, and, it, and without having to defend a business model that may not have a long-term future. And so companies like Rivian and, and other startups uh, that can get access to the best talent and then can get access to capital and kind of have the business model chops of an Amazon behind it, mm -hmm. um, that could pose to us, we think, a, a much more serious threat to Tesla than, say, the Germans, who will have EVs, right. but the cultural issues are, are real limiting factors in our opinion. Adam, I, I guess I've always felt competition was the big issue, but I, mm -hmm. I, I would be more concerned if I'm a Tesla shareholder about balance sheet issues and solvency mm -hmm. issues at yeah. this point. And, and I, I got very concerned at looking at their CapEx um, essentially being down 60% year over mm -hmm. year during for a company that's a growth company. Can, mm -hmm. can, can you explain to me either why that might be the case and also mm -hmm. just where your greatest concerns lie in this company? Um, well, I think that concern, the biggest question for Tesla's share price would say over the next 12 months, more than just this emerging competition is, is this company finally at a point where it's self-financing, where it doesn't need external capital, equity capital, to fund its very ambitious plans? Last two quarters would tell you, heck yeah, you know, they almost a billion of cat free cash flow per quarter. The referendum in the market is the difference between what has been achieved and what can be sustained. And Elon also, frankly, guided to a pretty weak Q1. We're expecting a 600 million uh, cash burn, maybe as much as a billion in the first quarter. We think for the year they burn cash, not a ton but reverse that trend. Uh, so cutting the CapEx, yeah, we think that there may be an air pocket from some demand that was pulled forward. And some of the ambitions we still think could use some external funding. We don't think they're quite out of the woods yet. Every time they've done a secondary or some form of a capital raise, the stock has actually rallied. Is yep. the next one, I know your price target, I think is 283. Correct. Is the next one the market doesn't look as favorably upon, in your opinion? Yeah, it depends where the money comes from. We think that Tesla is fundamentally overvalued, but strategically undervalued. The mixture of those two things leaves, in our opinion, a stock that's slightly above fair value, 283. Uh, we think that the next capital raise, uh, if it doesn't come from a strategic, be it a sovereign, a tech partner, another OEM, all of the above, 
if it doesn't come from that genre, uh, then it's not because they didn't try, in our opinion. So that, that could go a long way. Can they attach to a platform uh, that can provide a, a greater resiliency longer term to their model instead of just being a standalone electric car company? Last quick question on mm -hmm. GM, going back to Rivian. Does that news make you incrementally more bullish on GM and the GM electrified vehicle story? Well, let's just say, if, assuming the news is confirmed, because yes. the companies have not uh, conf confirmed it, they've not had a comment, but assuming it's true, <clears throat> I think it would, it would suggest that the board of directors of GM, which is very sophisticated, we've written a lot about just how important the culture of the GM board has been to like, you know, a reawakening this company and, and being very agile. It's great to see them do that. At the same time, it's kind of a, if you can't beat them, join them moment for GM where they're funding a disruptor who's going after a segment where GM and their Detroit brethren, I mean, that's the holiest of holies, that pickup truck market. We joke, I mean, the, the F-150 is called the F-150 because we think it accounts for 150% of Ford's profits. So it's kind of touch and go. And I'd say a net negative. Auto analyst humor. Yeah. Wait, it's a net negative for GM. <laughs> I think it's, GM. A, it's, a net, it's, a, it's a net negative, but it's okay. better than being in denial and, and perhaps just spending, letting somebody else or maybe take spending the share. money by yourself and saying, we'll do it, we'll it in-house and we'll dominate. No one can touch our trucks. So it's, oh. a, it's a bit of a self-awareness, but a net negative in our opinion. All right. Adam, thank you. Adam Jonas of Morgan Stanley. Um, what I think he says a couple things about the Q4 to Q1 sequential move. That guide for Q1 was substantially uh, for greater for Tesla mm -hmm. than it has been Q4 to Q1. I think it's close to 10% in terms of revenue. So what that does is set up very low expectations as we get towards the end of the quarter. And the other thing Guy will tell you is the thing, you know, 280 on the downside, 380 on the upside. You know, I think shorts covered down near 280. I mean, the ones, not the ones that are dig in. So the stock has turned into a pretty good um, trading vehicle no pun intended and the fact of the matter is that for the first time in a while they actually have lowered expectations where they haven't done so I mean Tesla's effectively gone nowhere the dance point on the trading range for the last year or so I tend to look at the company more like a venture capital type investment where you have a five or ten year type of time horizon that it's going to be this disruptive force not just in autos but perhaps in the electric grid and all of that and so in that sense it's one of those for me you buy it you take the shares you put them in your drawer and in ten years see if you want it's nice to hear Adam, you know, who we respect, talk about his respect for the GM board. And I, I think the story on GM, and we learned about that, that, that news yesterday, does this give GMs multiple, which to me has been hard to talk about it and, and or hard, to, hard to explain. Dan loves to talk about it, and Dan may be right. In other words, how do you explain a company that continues to deliver numbers and be stuck in this multiple range, which is sub six right now, 2019? I think GM is obviously the, bet, the better play between the two, not only on valuation, because I think they're going to be in this space. I mean, I thought it was interesting. The initial reaction was positive on, on the part of GM shares to this news. And Adam's sake was very interesting that it's, yep. uh, you know, just self-awareness that it's behind, that it's got to do something very quickly. It's got to do something. It's got to do, do something, something quickly. And yeah. the knee jerk was higher. And it's probably yeah. going to sift back like it was. And did you notice Adam has cufflinks? He's got AJ cufflinks because we How gave, appropriate. Because that we gave him that nickname. You're taking credit for that? I would posit that he was born with those initials. Yeah, though. why are you taking credit right. for his, his so, cufflinks? He's my favorite Jonas brother, too. Yeah, he's the best one. He's the, he's the bonus, bonus, yes. Jonas. The bonus, Jonas. Excellent.